Hello, this is Colleen Shoemaker with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Terry Parker, running for Portland City Commissioner, position two. Welcome, Terry. Thank you. Please tell us a little about yourself, why you're running for this office, and what unique characteristics you have among all candidates for this office. Well, I'm, a, I'm a born in Portland, and I've spent over 20 years as a Yellow Page National Account Representative. I also have experience uh, in supply center management and as a, as a customer relations manager. Uh, as an activist working on city issues, I entered this race because self-sufficient working people and uh, families and senior citizens on uh, fixed incomes, I don't feel are represented at City Hall anymore. They pay the taxes and they seem to get less and less services back. Uh, I've got some issues that stopping, to remove, stopping the removal of full service travel lanes on major streets, which creates more congestion I think we need some better street lighting and more crosswalks. Uh, I also support strengthening uh, Portland's world-renowned uh, framework of neighborhood associations and finding a way to give recognition to other community groups so that it's not just one-sided, but the, the neighborhood associations are the geographic. And, and, I, and I oppose in adding density in the single-family neighborhoods. It takes away the green, it demolishes the uh, uh, the excuse me, <laughs> the most affordable homes, uh, and it removes a lot of trees. Okay, the, the COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting devastation of small business, city employee layoffs, and housing development will be with us for some time. How would you seek to address the fallout, including the reduction in city revenue? Well, I, I'll use P Peabot as an example because I'm kind of a transportation advocate. And the rhetoric has always been, uh, the rhetoric has always been for people to get out of their cars. Now we have people out of their cars and uh, we're going to have a, uh, you know, a $7 million a month uh, shortfall. Uh, and Peabot keeps building bicycle lanes uh, like a Cadillac system of privileged bicycle infrastructure for just 8% of the population. I think to create equity, we should all be this in this together with the users of all modes paying their share for infrastructure. And as for some of the protections the city is offering, such as protecting renters in, from evictions, I'm concerned about the small landlords that maybe have just a few units uh, that aren't going to have, that they can't collect rent. Are they gonna be out for uh, financial devastation? So I, I'm really concerned about them. If we maintain our current government structure, what city bureau would you want to oversee and why? I'd like to oversee uh, Peabot. <laughs> uh, you're smiling, I can tell. <laughs> uh, because I, 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 the people that drive and pay the lion's share of the roads are no longer listened to or represented at, at City Hall. Uh, the system is biased and broken. Public engagement must include motor specific rep representation on all Peabot advisory committees with seats at the table proportion proportionally based on the mode split. Getting the most bang for your buck is making entire streets flow better for cars and trucks, which in turn will make transit flow better. How would you address the public's significant concerns about police and community relations, the use of deadly force, and officer accountability? Well, quite honestly, this is not an issue that I've followed that closely. Uh, however, I do think uh, the police themselves deserve more respect. It's a hard job and a hard job to do. And with protests and counter protests, the job is getting harder. And the question itself is not, reflect, not reflective of all officers. For those it may be reflective of, that's why we have grand juries and a criminal justice system. The same is true for the members of the community that create crimes. Yet some in the community criticize the police who commit similar crimes. I question the double standard uh, here, uh, just like I question the fairness of a double standard of law enforcement continually uh, ignoring bicyclists when they arrogantly flaunt traffic laws. The city's park system, 
faces serious financial challenges, even more so since the closures caused by the pandemic. What ideas do you have for securing the financial stability of our well-loved park system? <laughs> it is a love park system, and this is really a tough one because the, the whole city budget I was reading this morning was, you know, $100 million or something going to be cut. Uh, this is to find some short-term fixes to keep parks budget solvent until the economy picks up. Uh, again, parks is not my area of expertise, but one idea I might pass on would be a, like an emergency ordinance to, to use the system development charges for just the basic services and not just improvements in the short term to keep it going. And maybe we could also come up with something like a reduction of green space, space tax or a tax when when uh, develop, uh, a higher tax when developers cut trees down in the neighborhoods that could help support parks because it's all part of the greenway system that we have. Well, thank you. Those are all our prepared questions, but you have, we have about a minute and a half left. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, <laughs> I'd love to add a lot of stuff, but I, I think that, I think we'll let it, let it be at this time because I, I didn't have anything really prepared to say and I, Little bit more than I normally do because I was trying not to read read my answers and <laughs> so I was looking at the screen and so I I appreciate the opportunity but let's uh, let's call it a day <laughs> well thank you very much Terry thank you so much this has been the video voters guide thank you for watching the primary election is Tuesday May 19th be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.